A warm greeting, today is Friday, September 8, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 6.30 p.m. local time in the Caribbean. In this visible satellite image, we can see Hurricane Lee, which continues to be a powerful Category 4 hurricane. As you know, yesterday Hurricane Lee strengthened impressively and reached Category 5 with sustained maximum winds of 165 miles per hour. Since this morning, we have seen that southwest wind shear has been impacting the circulation, causing it to weaken slightly. In the 5 p.m. bulletin, it has sustained maximum winds of 150 miles per hour, so Hurricane Lee continues to be a major hurricane. Although it is anticipated to have intensity fluctuations over the next 3 to 5 days, it is forecasted to remain a major hurricane at least through the middle of next week. Fortunately for residents of the northeastern Caribbean, Hurricane Lee is already at a fairly high latitude. The forecast has been very accurate and has maintained that west-northwest trajectory away from the Caribbean region. Over the weekend, it will turn more to the west, but it will be located about 350 miles northeast of the Lesser Antilles. Nevertheless, some indirect impacts will be felt across the northern Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, the Bahamas, Turks, and Caicos, and the eastern United States. If we look at the infrared satellite image, we can see that Hurricane Lee's circulation no longer looks symmetrical as it did yesterday. Although it continues to generate strong thunderstorms near the center of circulation, we see that the strongest part remains displaced to the south of the center of circulation. It continues to battle with some wind shear. This wind shear has also been injecting dry air into the circulation of Hurricane Lee. In this image, we can see the history of how this circulation center has been moving. Note that it maintains a west-northwest movement, which has led this system to move away from the Caribbean region. Specialized intensity models keep this west-northwest trajectory at least until next Monday or Tuesday. Afterward, it is projected to turn north, which would take Hurricane Lee to pass west of Bermuda by the middle and end of next week. There is no longer any risk of this cyclone affecting the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, the Bahamas, and the eastern United States. In terms of intensity, you can see that models continue to predict it will maintain Category 4 status over the next 5 days, although it cannot be ruled out that it could strengthen again into a Category 5 hurricane when passing north of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Also, note in the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center that the cone of uncertainty is far from the Caribbean, so you can rest assured as no significant variations are expected in this forecast. Let's look at the projections from the European model. You can see that in the latest run, the European model continues to forecast a generally westward movement over the next 4-5 to five days. In fact, on Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, the European model strengthens Hurricane Lee once again into a Category 5 hurricane when it is located about 400 miles north of Puerto Rico. At this distance, tropical storm force winds and the heaviest rain should remain over Atlantic waters. In Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and the northern Lesser Antilles, there's no need to worry because the effects will be limited to rough seas and some coastal flooding along the northern coasts of these countries. Later, the European model indicates that it should turn north, passing just west of Bermuda on Saturday morning, and then moving over Atlantic waters. In the long term, it could be of interest to Nova Scotia and the northeastern United States, as I will explain further. Now, let's see the projection of the GFS model. It has a very similar forecast to the European model, maintaining major hurricane status over the next 4-5 to five days. Starting on Wednesday, it will take a northward trajectory, passing west of Bermuda and at a distance from the eastern and southeastern regions of the United States. Likewise, it is not expected to reach the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. In the long term, look at the projections from the ensemble members of the GFS model. You can see that by mid-September, the circulation center of what may possibly become a post-tropical cyclone could affect Nova Scotia with hurricane force winds. We cannot rule out that some effects may also be felt in New England. Similarly, the ensemble members of the European model agree with this forecast, potentially bringing the circulation center of this cyclone to Nova Scotia in the long term. The majority agree that it should stay west of Bermuda and away from the Bahamas and the eastern United States. The most significant effects expected from this cyclone will be the strong waves impacting the islands north of the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and the Bahamas with waves that could be between 10 to 12 feet high throughout the weekend and the beginning of next week. Exercise caution throughout the northeastern Caribbean as these conditions will cause some flooding and coastal erosion over the next 5 to 6 days. Remember that Atlantic waters will be very dangerous, and it is not recommended for small boat operators to go out in the next few days. This strong swell will impact the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands with waves between 12 to 15 feet high starting from the Thursday and Friday of next week. Then, 
As it moves north-northwest, you can see that the east coast of the United States from Florida to North Carolina could experience hazardous beach conditions with rip currents and some coastal flooding. These effects will be felt from Sunday to the following Thursday. In the long term, as the circulation center moves near Nova Scotia, residents of the northeastern United States and Nova Scotia should pay attention to the evolution of Hurricane Lee. It could have some significant impacts in mid-September. For now, effects from Virginia to New York should be minor. That's all for this forecast. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the videos I'll be recording. Go to the bottom of the video, click on the red button that says subscribe, and then click on the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload new videos. I hope everyone has an excellent weekend. To residents of the Northern Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic, exercise caution over the next few days. Avoid visiting the beaches in the north and east of these islands. With this, I bid you farewell, and until later.